one of the most pleasurable experiences about being on a boat is when you moor up somewhere in a beautiful location, the sun's coming down, it's time for a bit of a tipple. On a hot day, nice cold beer, oh, glass of wine, whatever's your thing, it really does go hand in hand. Now you have to remember before I continue that this is just my opinion. Everybody has an opinion, right? This is just mine. If you take offence to this video, then really, I don't care, because I take offence to your boats smashing into mine. So if you have a problem with this video, there's a button at the bottom which says stop, and all you've got to do is go to another one, okay? And if you really want to uh, feel better about yourself, or if you find yourself feeling em emasculated by this video, there's a dislike button down there too. You can click that. I really don't care. What I care for is to promote ways in which to stop hire boats and other vessels, if you like, from damaging so many boats on the Norfolk Broads because it ruins the boating experience. Accidents on the Broads are few and far between. No disrespect, but that's absolute rubbish. Um, boats tapping into each other. It's not a big deal. 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 You can damage the boat. Obviously, the owner isn't going to be happy. Well, it is a big deal. It's a very big deal. And you're right about one thing. The owner's not going to be happy. <laughs> cool, ain't that the truth? I made a freedom of information request for collision statistics from the Broads Authority for 2017. As you can see in this picture here, there was 13 reports. Obviously those statistics only refer to um, when people have actually filed a complaint or reported a collision. I say that because last year, 2017, I was hit by hire boats three times in one day and I didn't report those. So how many people don't report those collisions? What are the true statistics? There's certainly not 13. And there's also other offences of not navigating with care and caution, just like on the road. You've got to drive sensibly. Now he's right. There is actually a bylaw against this, but the thing is, it's, it's ambiguous. What does it actually mean? And furthermore, is it enforced? <laughs> Drinking on a boat, that's your business. You know, there's no reason why people shouldn't enjoy themselves and have it. Get on the source, why not? However, the skipper shouldn't be. There's a reason why people say you're under the influence. You wouldn't drive one of those under the influence or any other vehicle. Why should the skipper have a boat? When you're helming, don't have too much, you can drink, but ideally don't have anything. What we try and encourage people to do is whoever's on the helm, don't have a drink. As long as you're capable of helming it and helming it safely, then you can have a drink. But we try to encourage people not to if they're actually on the helm. Are you aware that the drink drive limit now for boats is exactly the same as cars? <laughs> In fact, this may surprise you, but the maximum fine is £5,000 and even two years in jail. I bet nobody told you that, did they? Did you know that? No. Another interesting point is I've never had a problem with uh, day boats, the very small day boats which people hire for a few hours or even the day. Now, there's got to be a message there, right? And the, the fact is, these hire boats, the day boats, they're small boats, and they're boats which are more suited to the Norfolk Broads. Maybe not for overnight staying and stuff, but the fact of the matter is, they're that much smaller, and because they're that much smaller, people are able to control them better. I've had the odd tap of day boats in very busy areas, but nothing like the big monstrous hire boats. So immediately, you can tell that the boats are too big. It's not right that somebody should be able to come along and hire a 45 foot boat, have 10-20 minutes tuition and then go out and 
navigate the waterways. I mean, it's it's just stupid. I mean, of course they're going to have problems. You can't blame the boat hirers. You've got this monstrous boat, 45 feet long, which takes time to learn to navigate and to control. You can't expect them to go out and moor up in these narrow little waterways like at Neater's Head and Gaith Stays and, and uh, Sutton, Stalham, without colliding with other boats. So the boats are too big. So if you're going to allow people to take out these monstrous boats, you should give them monstrous tuition. And one of the things you really want to sort of eradicate from the situation, or the equation rather, is the person operating that boat, which is too big, being able to get on the source. It's just not sensible. It's stupid. The hire boat companies know this. I'm not saying all the hire boat companies promote this or allow it, because the small hire boat companies, I won't mention any names, but they're all dying out now. I've never had any problems with them at all. But the big three, or the big four, should I say, is the same boats every time. Bang, bang, bang. Boat's too big. People driving, got no tuition. Too little tuition. Of course it's going to be a problem. Now, when you see somebody coming along on a hire boat, and they've obviously been doing it for years, and they're highly skilled, and they're very experienced, you know, you've got nothing but total respect for them. They, they handle those boats like 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 a, like an ocean liner. It's very, very impressive, and a lot can be learned from watching them. But then you come and you see somebody coming along who hasn't got a clue. You've got three or four people on the boat inside who are not out fendering off. They smash into your boat, and they just go, sometimes even laughing. I had a boat the other day. I was at um, Sutton. It was a very large boat called Challenger, which is commonly hired for the stag dudes. If I hadn't rushed to the back and pleaded with one of the blokes to fend off and pushed off with myself, it would have smashed the transom on this boat and sunk it. Why should I have to put up with that? If it was every now and then, you'd sort of say, well, that's just the way it is. It's law of averages. But this is every single day. And it's so much so that it makes you paranoid to leave your boat alone to go to the shops because you're going to come back and find your boat damaged and if it is damaged no one will have stayed around and exchanged details this has gone on for too long now and enough is enough so what is the solution you ask well I have a few ideas here we go the skipper of a vessel whether it's a private boat a hire boat or a commercial boat doesn't matter it's on the waterways, they're navigating it, they have to be held responsible for it and for any third party that they collide with. When you offer somebody the opportunity to have a collision damage waiver, what you're in fact doing is giving them a green card to deny responsibility for the vessel they are supposed to be responsible for. Because basically, if they crash that vessel, it doesn't matter, they pay the collision damage waiver. If, however, they were forced to take more responsibility by paying a deposit, or being forced to leave details to pay a deposit, then they would take a lot more care about avoiding hitting other craft. You know, quit your inner dialogue, that's a fact. And my final suggestion, which is one that can be implemented very, very quickly, is video tuition before people take boats out. I think people should be made to sit down and watch a video for maybe half an hour, 45 minutes, before they even go out in a boat with an instructor. And this should cover subjects which the instructor doesn't have time to tell people and everybody on board that vessel should watch it so they know what to do where to be and what they should be doing and above all else what they shouldn't be doing